Two of the oldest sbase calc script functions are at var and at var per. At var and its related function at var per determine when you should have one member minus another or the other way around. For example, on revenue, you generally want actual to be higher than budget. So if you budget $500 and you have $1,000 in actual, you're $500 positive. On the other hand, for expenses, if you budget $500 and you spend $1,000, your $500 to the negative. You spent $500 more than you were hoping to. So the syntax for the at var function is quite simply at var, the member that normally you want to be higher than the second one, and then the other member. So member one followed by member two. However, if you go into the outline and you take an account as an expense, instead of doing member one minus member two, it will do member two minus member one. So the most common case that's going to happen for all the accounts, except the ones tagged as expense, it's going to do the first member minus the second one. But in those rare cases where you went into the outline and you tag something as an expense, it's going to be member two minus member one. Normally, this is used on a scenario. So you could say variance equals at var actual comma budget. And this is what happens inside of sample basic. You could theoretically use it on a non-scenario. For instance, you could have a time dimension that has years in it, and you might have a time member called current year versus prior year. And the at var might be cy comma py. The, uh, and in revenue cases, it'll take current year minus prior year. And in expense cases, it'll take prior year minus current year. The at var per function is a slightly more complicated version of at var it will determine the percent increase or percent decrease between the first and second members, again, taking into account whatever members are taken as expense. So in this case, we, instead of saying at var, we say at var per, for per for percentage, member one comma member two. So if we have a revenue type account, it's going to be actual minus budget divided by budget times 100. In an expense account, it's going to be budget minus actual. Still divided by budget, it will always take the second member times 100. And in the example of sample basic, it's variance percentage equals at var per actual comma budget. So a simple example, say this was my accounts hierarchy. Now you'll notice my cost of goods sold member and all of my expenses are tagged as expense reporting. I did that inside of my space outline. And in some cases, if you use applications like Hyperion Planning and tag things as expenses, it will automatically put the expense tag on in your outline. Now here's my scenario dimension. I have actual, I have budget. Notice I have two variance members, at var actual comma budget and at var per actual comma budget, my variance percentage. You'll notice that sales are 400,855, cost of goods sold are 179,336 on actuals. Notice the budget was slightly lower than that for sales and slightly lower than that for cost of goods sold. Notice the variance on sales, because it's not tagged as an expense, is going to be actual minus budget. But notice the variance on cost of goods sold, actual was higher than budget, that's a bad thing. So it makes it negative 20,396. Similarly, it takes the variance percentage, and because actual was higher than budget for sales, that's a good thing, 7.4% increase. Because actual was higher than budget on expenses, that's a bad thing, or a negative variance of 12.8%. So here's another way to think about it. Let's say I didn't have the outvar function, or I'd somehow never heard about it and thought it'd be great fun to instead use the isAccountType function and completely do away with atvar. Well, the atvar recreation is pretty simple. If it's an expense account, see where it says is account type expense, then it's budget minus actual. If it's not an expense, meaning every single other account in the account dimension, it's going to be actual minus budget. The var per function is a little more complicated. We still check if it's an expense. If it's an expense, it's budget minus actual divided by budget times 100, so we don't have to do our pesky percentage formatting. If it's not an expense, it's actual minus budget divided by budget times 100. Do note it doesn't change the denominator in either case. It's not that if it's an expense, the denominator is budget. If it's not an expense, the denominator was actual. This is the similar concept to how you would create at var and at var per if you were doing an ASO application. Now it's really important. You might find at variance and at variance P and think those mean actual minus budget or actual minus budget divided by budget. No. At variance and at variance p do statistical variances. They are very fundamentally different functions. So at var and at var per are the ones you generally want to be grabbing. 